very, 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 very short bio. <laughs> so I'm just going to read her official bio out. Nalini Singh is the New York Times best-selling author of the Psy Changeling and Guild Hunter paranormal romances, plus thrillers and other romances. <laughs> but um, you are so much more than that. You are one of New Zealand's highest selling authors online, I have to say, and but a lot of New Zealanders never heard of you, sadly. But that is changing and we would like to know more about you because I, I feel that I'm not doing you justice. <laughs> I can say that your books have 1,059,370 ratings on Goodreads, which just shows how popular you are. Sorry. I'm embarrassed now. <laughs> so Nalini's uh, written two thrillers. Uh, uh, her first one is called oh, a, Mad a Madness of Sunshine, sorry. And she's just released Quiet in Her Bones, which uh, was coming out before Criminal Minds, but now that this is our third round of <laughs> Criminal Minds, it is now out. So she is going to read from Quiet in Her Bones. In the so, Quiet in Her Bones is set in near the Waitakere Ranges, so out in Tidarangi, and it's basically a cold case. So, 10 years ago, Nina Wright vanished without a trace, and everybody thought she was a rich woman, got sick of her husband, took a quarter of a million dollars, and took off as living on a beach somewhere. And as the book begins, the police knock on the door. They're like, we found Nina in her car at the bottom of a valley in the Waitakere Ranges. And she's wearing the clothes from that night. All her bones are. So she's been there the whole time. Uh, the quarter of a million dollars is missing. And her son is determined to find out what happened to his mother. So I'm going to read you a bit from chapter three. My hands tightened on the steering wheel as my father got into the passenger seat. We didn't speak. My eyes on the unmarked police vehicle up ahead. Driven by Constable Neary, it led us out of the leafy gilded surrounds of the cul-de-sac and onto a long and winding road bordered by the dense forests of the Waitakere Ranges Regional Park. With only small hamlets of habitation along the way and glimpses of breathtaking vistas where the foliage opened up. Scenic Drive lived, lived up to its name, but only if you weren't expecting pretty and safe. All that rich green turned parts of the road claustrophobic. It was never searing hot here, not in the cool darkness of the shadows cast by the forest giants. This was a quiet place, a place that whispered that humanity was an intrusion that would be swiftly forgotten once we were gone. An unexpected flash of white, a large sign at the entrance to a trail, warning that the area was under a rahui because of cowrie dieback disease. No one was permitted to go on those trails because the disease spread through the forest on the soles of human shoes, bringing a slow death to trees meant to grow far older than my mother would ever be. I followed the police car knowing that if it stopped anywhere on this road, it would be a spot I'd driven past hundreds of times. Passing my mother's grave over and over again. The unmarked car slowed as it turned the corner and when I followed, I saw flashing lights, road cones and an orange vested officer waiting to direct traffic through what had become a single narrow lane. One of the darkest section of the, sections of the road and of the forest the land dropped off precipitously to my right, but not into emptiness, into bush dense and thick and impenetrable to the human eye. Ancient kauri trees, nika palms, huge tree ferns, this landscape was theirs. Constable Neary brought the police vehicle to a stop behind a van and I pulled in behind her. Everyone waited while I got the crutches from the back seat, no one speaking. Armpits smoked into the tops of the walking aids, I nodded. And the cops led us to a part of the road that had no safety barrier against the fall into the green. I couldn't remember if it ever had. 
The car was found at the foot of this incline, Regan told us, nose down. That fit my father's theory of it sliding off the road and down the sleep, sl steep slope into the devouring forest. I wanted to dispute the idea of my mother driving off the road on a rainy night, such a neat and tidy end to everything. But she had drunk too much, as long as I could remember, and she could be a reckless driver. Of course, if I were the one writing this story, I'd use those very things to cover up a scream, cover up a murder. Thank you, Nalini. So when I looked her up on Goodreads to check my facts, I had to rest on the couch with a cold compress. <laughs> so as I said, Goodreads tells me that your books have had 1,059,370 ratings, 71,710 reviews, and have been shelved 1,823,315 times. Are you tired? <laughs> <laughs> or do you have a never-ending well of ideas that you have to get down on the page? Yeah, I always joke that I'm going to keel over dead over my typewriter or my keyboard or whatever. You know, maybe we'll have a brain-to-speech device by the time it's my turn to go. But, you know, I love writing. And, you know, all those ratings and stuff, it's not over the course of a few months or even a year. So next year is the 20th anniversary of my first sale. So that's two decades of work. Um, you know, I... In terms of energy, I definitely had more when I was a bit young, you know, um, in terms of doing like really late nights. I used to work seven nights a week. I was just very compulsive about my writing and I still am to this day, but I have learned to be more zen and be a bit more balanced because I do want to be doing this forever. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. So you are a New York Times best-selling author. And that must be an amazing feeling, as I'm not sure how many, or if any, other New Zealand authors have made that list. <coughs> and you made that list with your paranormal romance books, but now you've cemented yourself a place on the New Zealand best-selling lists for your crime novels. So why the change? Or is it not that big a step from romance to books about bones uncovered in the New Zealand bush? <laughs> um, so there is one author that I know of that recently made the list, a young woman by the name of Chloe Gong. So, um, it's not that much of a change because uh, my paranormal romances have always actually had mysteries within them. It just so happened that they involved vampires, you know, getting murdered instead of humans. So, um, yeah, oddly enough, it hasn't been that different. What has been different is that these books are so very set in New Zealand. It is, New Zealand is a character in the books and the publishers are sort of, um, they're promoting it as New Zealand noir, you know. It's, um, because uh, New Zealand is such a big part of the book. So that's actually been really, really fun, being able to... Um, we went on so many drives through the Waitakere, you know, um, regional park, um, and I was like, oh, I could push the car off over there and over there. And so, you know, a little bit creepy, but... Um, yeah, so it, it, everything in here in terms of the, the locations and things like that, it exists, you know, it's maybe not in exactly that form. But it exists. So yeah, that, that's been really interesting. That's been the difference. Thank you very much.